So yeah, hello everyone. Uh, so how many of you are like using just an enzyme at production? Oh, great number. Fine. I hope rest of you will start using after my talk. <laughs> so cool. I'm traveling all the way from India, and yeah, I'm a senior developer at uh, Book My Show. Book My Show is uh, India's largest movie ticket selling company, and yeah, we are like connected to 2,500 screens all over. Only a single file serves that layout, so yeah, testing is like a very important for us. So yeah, I think all, all of us feel uh, like this when you know we are told to write test cases. So once upon a time, there were like you know tons and tons of uh, testing frameworks to test your JavaScript code, but then I got this superwoman and you know the Wonder Woman and the Superman known as Jest and Enzyme. That is what I term them. So cool. Uh, so why Jest? So for us, uh, we wanted something that would set up really quick. And we could run the tests in parallel. This is where Mocha lost the battle for us. That is why we chose Jest. And the other reasons were, so you see a, a lot of them on the left, test runners like Mocha, Mocking Library. So all of them are separate libraries, while Jest gave us you know, all of them. So I would say before React, like if I had to talk just about UI, I would say like before React, testing UI was very hard. But then gradually, after React came, testing UI was possible, but still, people find it difficult, right? Also, talking about UI, I would say UI is nothing but your functional state. And they are pure functions, right? So if they are pure functions, why is it still difficult to test? So I would say testing your leaf components fairly is easy and straightforward. But as you move up the DOM tree, it's like very difficult because all of your components also have a subcomponents that you need to test. So here was their answer. Shallow render in React. So React kind of had this feature of shallow rendering, wherein it could give us it returned the output of a single component, but there was a pro but again there was a problem. Like I had to actually traverse through you know uh, multiple trees to get down to that node. There was no specific item that I could return. Every time I had to actually traverse through all the nodes in order to find them or actually uh, simulate any event on that. So as you see, uh, the highlighted part, again, I am actually you know, going, traversing through all of them, and then traversing to the children. So it was like a lot of tasks which I had to do. In order to fix this, we used the Wonder Woman. That was Enzyme. So Enzyme was like a perfect solution for us because it kind of imported a shallow function wherein we could pass the component. And it kind of worked for us. Because in, if we need to target a specific element, that, that works like a really easy, in a very easy way. So this, is, this, were a couple of, uh, the, uh, this had a couple of less implementations, if you see, other than that. So this is where Enzyme helped us in a way. We could do it um, in a much faster way. Also, in addition to you know, shallow, uh, there were other uh, functions like mount and render. Mount works for full DOM rendering, and render works for like your HTML rendering. So now the question is, OK, I have the you know, enzyme, I have Jest. What should I actually test? So, where, so you should be testing the real DOM, that is your state and props. Are they being rendered correctly? Secondly. Your events are being fired or not. Also, the state transition from one state to other, is, is it happening in a better way or not? Is it happening in the correct way or not? So these are a few examples wherein I'm just playing around with the state and the props to be what they are supposed to be. And obviously, so Enzyme provides this a very super thing that is simulating an event. So in a test, in a, while you're on the test environment, you can actually not click you know, the button or say anything. 
So it kind of provides us a simulation wherein you know we are actually clicking that thing. So enzyme is like a best way in this. So there, there's something cool with uh, Jest, which is like a uh, snapshot testing. Uh, snapshot testing kind of gives you a rendered component into a file, and this file is just you know a JSON string. Every time you run your you know every time you run your test case, the snapshot is being compared to your component that is being rendered. So the, every time you are like changing your component, you need to update your snapshot as well. So this is like a cool feature. You need not write all that simulation. Every time you just change the component, just go and update your component. So this is how it works. Uh, where while you're running your snapshot test, it checks whether you know, it has a snapshot or not. If it has, it just tries to compare it with the previous one. And vice of, like, it says whether it is passed or failed. And if it doesn't have a snapshot, it tries to save it at the first go. So Jest 18 has uh, come up with something called as uh, snapshot serializers. So uh, while you're actually converting your uh, enzyme to JSON, when you're using this method, so you use this method while you're doing your snapshot testing, because you actually convert whatever output you have, you convert to JSON string. That is where it helps you. But now Jest has inbuilt snapshot serializers, so you don't no need to worry about it, and you can you can no more use this you know, enzyme to JSON function. So probably migrating from enzyme to enzyme 2.x to 3.x is also very easy, because now enzyme 3 can be used with you know, all of like Preact, React 16, React 15. All you need to do is just have your setup file. And, you, you, and in the file, you need to require the enzyme and use the adapter. So, so for suppose uh, here I'm just using enzyme adapter React 15. In case if you're using React 16, you can specify that. So enzyme is made compatible to work with all of them, React 15, React 16, or whether it is Preact. Uh, this is one of the cool features, like Jest mocking. So Jest.fn is kind of a spy function, which you know spies your function's behavior. Jest.mock, uh, it uh, basically mocks all the imports in your code. And mocks directory is nothing but so whenever you're dealing with uh, Jest mocking feature, so Jest has this feature called of mocking. Whenever you're dealing with this, so this is a, one of the folders that is taken uh, into consideration because all of your mocking things are inside this folders, underscore mocks, underscore, underscore. Next is, you know, developers tend to struggle a lot when they are doing uh, async API testing. So this is one of the fair ways, very easy example, wherein I'm just trying to make a request to fetch the, you know, user data. And what I'm doing is, so I specify the underscore, underscore mock folder. What I will do is the request.js file, which is being created here, is nothing but this is actually mocking the request which I'm making here. So this, this, this is basically a mock thing which I've created here. And while I'm running my tests, I'll be using this jest.mock, and I'll be running all the, all the test cases. So what my function is actually doing is it is checking whether my promise has resolved or it has been rejected. I can also use async and wait. And probably if you're using uh, uh, async and wait, you should be using uh, just 20 plus, I mean the version uh, 20 plus version, because it has async and await. It also has reject and resolve, which you can use. So yeah, this is like a very cool feature provided by it. There are some other features. Uh, it's like it gives you a coverage result. You know your entire code, how much code you have been uh, test cases been covered or not. Secondly, it also gives you a watch mode. Which is like a super cool with, you know, O thing, which kinds of uh, only runs that test cases which you've committed since the last commit. So I mean, the, it checks for the file changes and only runs that test case. So it's, this is a very cool feature. Also, it kinds of use. Uh, it has enabled uh, using you know the 
uh, time fakers, as in it mocks your time, where in the case if you're using set timeout or say set interval, so it, it, it is very useful over there. Uh, run and ban is like a very cool feature when you want to debug because uh, just kind of runs all the tests in parallel. When you're, deal when you're using run and ban as an option, it kind of runs synchronously. And this helps you while you want to debug you know, where your test case is failing or you know, what, what is happening with my test case. Third is this is uh, your identif identify uh, object proxy, which makes use of ES6 proxies. It kind of mocks the Webpack imports that you use in your code. Last is you can also you know, mock global objects like navigators or locations. So it kind of gives you that full freedom. Uh, so this was a bit short talk. So I have written a full detailed uh, thing. You can go to this link. Uh, it covers a lot of things, even you know what I have not spoken here also. So you can go to this link and have a look at it.